Now, let's get to the fun stuff. So now we have segment implemented. We have a source, a JavaScript source, and we have a destination. In this case, mixed panels to start with, but we're gonna look at a bunch of different tools and see how, how we can send data to them. Now I went ahead and I added uh, the JavaScript source, which is a little snippet here. I added it to my website uh, and I did, actually did it through Google Tag Manager. So I just loaded it as a tag and then it's now loaded on every page of my website. And now we're gonna go in and send some events and see it as I go through segment and then eventually to mix panel. So let's hop onto the website and we got here, right? So it's the website, hashtag plug. Um, so we got here. Now we won't see it on the page because it's stored as a Google Tag Manager, but we can go to the console. Right. And this is, this is a JavaScript source, so we can actually look at it. So we know that when we look at the, the docs, everything for the JavaScript source is analytics.something, analytics.track, analytics.something, right? And there's a function here called analytics.ready. And this simply just tells us it fires when the, the segment library is ready to, to be used. So we can go here, analytics.ready, and we get it, right? So now we're now we're ready to send some data. So let's start with the most simple type of setup, right? Analytics.track, which is an event, and we're gonna call it test event. And we're gonna fire that. Now here, you know, we only get a confirmation, right? Now we have to, we can hop on back into our segment source. And we have a, the first option we'll be looking at here is a debugger, right? So when we look at the bugger, we can see the different events, right? And we can see now th this is the event we just sent, right? So we send analytics.track test event. We can look at the raw data behind this event. So even though we only gave it one parameter, which is the event name, there is other information that gets sent over the segment. So we know, you know, we've got mixed panel implemented. We can, we have an ID. So this, even though I'm, I haven't identified myself as a user, I'm an anonymous user and I have an ID, a random ID generated by a segment, but an ID nonetheless. We have library version, you know, that it was sent by the, the analytics.js library, what version it was. We're collecting a bunch of information on the page, like the page path, the refer, the title of the page, the URL of the page, the user agent, of course, IP. Here's the event name, which is the only thing I passed and some other things like the ID of the message, the time it would, it would send and receive, a timestamp, and so on. We can see a user ID is null, we haven't really passed any of that. So this is all the raw data, right? There was no errors. And this is really what the function that we fire into the console. We can see a few other things here. This is actually a page uh, function, and what that is is it fires every time there's a page view. So the if you look at the JavaScript snippet here, we'll see you know, we have uh, the first line here is everything about the segment library, the different functions that we want to load, where it's coming from, the uh, the CDN and so on. And then we have two things we're running. One, we load it, right? So we give it, you know, we take the segment workspace, uh, the source ID, sorry, and we load it. And two, we fire page, and page is just a page view. So this is very relevant for Google Analytics. And the reason why segment adds into the default snippet is because a lot of people will just simply load the snippet and then connect something to Google Analytics and then just expect it to work, right? And for Google Analytics to work, we need to send a page view to it. So that's what that page does. So if we were to refresh this page, we wouldn't see anything in the console, but if we then hop into the debugger, we see a new, a new call here, right? A new page and same thing. So we know we're, we're firing analytics.page by default in the snippet and we get all this information, right? The path, the title, the URL, and if we go into the raw, we have all this information about it too. So let's do one more. So let's do analytics.track, uh, test event two. So this is a string, and then we send it over, hop back over into the debugger, and we see it, test event two, same thing. Now we can see it go through segment, and then we can look at the third option, which is a schema. And what we look at this, what we look at the schema here is we get to see the different events that, that have fired through segment. So let's see if we can refresh this and get some data here. We have screen events, identify events, group events. Okay, so the schema hasn't updated yet. 
Uh, let me jump over to the last section here, which is called the setup section. Uh, and here we can just rename the sources. We're going to collaborators into a plan, uh, SQL settings. Uh, this becomes relevant for warehouses, right? We can transfer workspace, API keys, and a few other things, right? So now we have data went through, and it went to, but it went to Mixpanel, right? The, deb the debugger just shows us the data as it flows through segment, but what we really care about is what the data looks like at the other end when it goes to a destination. In this case, we got Mixpanel set up here. So let me jump in into this Mixpanel project we connected. And Mixpanel does have a, a report that shows us data as it comes in in real time, which is called the live view. And if we see it here, we see the different events that we have fired in the past few minutes. All right. We have a test event here, the first one. And we can see there's a bunch of properties that are collected automatically by the segment library, just like the Mixpanel JavaScript library would. Now, under my properties, there's nothing. I'm not sending any custom properties with this, but Mixpanel did collect a bunch of libraries. So we have browser information, browser version, which it gets from the user agent, the city, the country, and the region, which it gets from the IP address. The URL, which we saw in the, in the raw format. Some of the refer information, there was no refer, so it simply assumes direct. The distinct ID, which is the, the ID of the anonymous user, once again. And some of the other libraries, right? So we can see it's coming from a segment web library, was the library version, my operating system, and the time, how far along it was, right? And we see the same thing for our test event too, a bunch of different properties. So let's send an event with custom properties. Oh, and as a side note, this loaded page is the page view. If you're wondering where the name comes from, it actually comes from specific settings in the destination. So if we hop into the mix panel here, we see here, so it says uh, the one that's enabled is this one. So it's saying track all pages to mix panel with a consolidated event name. So if you click into that, this will tell you this would track loaded page events to mix panel for all the page methods calls and load the screen for the screen methods. So as, as we remember, we're doing analytics.page by default in the little snippet, and that gets converted into an event called loaded a page for Mixpanel. You can actually disable this if you wanted to. So let's hop back in and let's do something with properties, right? So let's go into a track here, get an example. Let's copy and paste it. So we have a, you know, an event called Oracle completed. We have title and we have course, right? So these are all custom properties that we're passing and that we'll, we'll be passing on to Mixpanel. So we're gonna do something like this and we'll actually pass it on just like this, all right? So let's hop on back to a debugger. And let's give it a second and we see a pop up. We see it's a track call. And we see the exact same thing, which is pop into a console, right? We have the event called Oracle completed, and we have two properties, course and title. Now, if we look at raw, we see the same thing, but now on the properties, you know, we're seeing course and title. The event name is called Oracle completed. Let's hop back into mix panel. We have one new event. Minimize that. We have an event called Oracle completed. And now under Mixpanel properties, we see the same things, all those default properties that Mixpanel collects, like CD, IP, and all that. And on the, under your properties, now we see our properties, right? We see course and title. And this is really the foundational of, of segment, especially the, the, the SDKs, as they call them, you know, the, the client libraries like JavaScript, iOS, and Android, and some of the server sites. We're passing events, and we're sending them over to its destination. So this is exactly how data will look like if we were, gonna, if we were to send that directly into Mixpanel. In this case though, we're sending it to the segment libraries and it gets converted for us nicely into Mixpanel. There is no issue. And as, as you can see, the data comes in almost instantaneously. Now there's one more thing that we can look at and that's the identify. So we can actually identify our anonymous user into something we recognize. So let's, let's do that here. Let's take this call here. And Mixpanel actually requires alias. So we're actually going to do alias. So let me do, 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 do. So we're going to run analytics.alias. So we're going to convert it from this anonymous user into something we recognize. 
and we're gonna use the email here. So we're gonna use the same email we used to sign up for segment. Ruben uh, plus video course at practicalanalytics.com. Another plug. So we're gonna fire that. And Elias is it's really specific to Mixpanel, but what we're basically saying here to Mixpanel is we know this user that's currently browsing the website is anonymous. Let's convert it. And from now on, we're gonna identify this user using this email right here. I'm gonna copy it, so I'll have to type it again. So we're gonna do that. And now we're going to pass the identify. So we go back to identify. And we're actually gonna take this and I will type it again. So the, the first option here is, is the identity, which we know was this. So we're actually gonna take that, pass it there. And under name, I'm gonna put my name. I'm not in the Navy, so I'm gonna change that into my email. And this are properties. Now the, the identify section has something called traits, which are basically user attributes. Uh, mixed panel calls them people properties. Everyone calls them something slightly different, but they're basically their user attributes. And mixed panel calls them traits. Sorry, and segment calls them traits. So we are gonna fire this and send that over. Now, if we go into segment, once again, we see our two calls here. We see Elias, right? And we can actually see that we only passed the first one, but uh, segment knows that we're replacing an existing ID. So actually, this is the existing ID. And then we have an identify call. So we identify with the email, and then we pass an email and name property. Now for the, the traits, there's actually quite a few default traits that you should take advantage of. So you can imagine things like first name, last name, email, phone number, company, and a few other things. You should use those um, as, and use the same value. And that's relevant because those are the values that some tools are expected. So tools like Mixpanel have a default value for first name and last name and email, which get used throughout the app for things like notifications and other things. So segment does keep to that as long as you use those segment values. So there is in the identify uh, reference here, you will actually be able to actually under the traits, if you kind of click into that. And if we scroll down just a bit, these are all the different default traits that we can use. Things like an address, age, avatar, company, created at, email, first name, and so on. And you should really use them. So, you know, instead of using Instead of using say email address, you should use email because you'll need it for the relevant tools. So let's hop back into mix panel. So we send an alias and an identify call. Now those calls don't actually appear in the live viewing report, just something specific to mix panel. For that, we have to hop into the explorer section. Okay. So now we see it here. And we see all, all of our activity, right? So we see all the different events we sent, we see the email, we pass a name, right? So these are all the default values that Mixpanel is expecting and they get passed on properly. And we see some of the other traits or people properties that get picked up automatically. So things like the browser, the country, the email, our IDs, of course, the email. In reality, you probably want something like a user ID, like a database ID to be here. But for our case, for this example, email will work. And we see some of the information like last seen and so on. And now we have profiles in Mixpanel and we have events, right? And that's, that's really the JavaScript source, right? So we can send data through JavaScript to different tools and specifically a tool like Mixpanel.